welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we'll sit down with Tim Cahill from the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, learn all about the holiday market that is coming up at Kilroy Square in Quincy Center and some other activities too. First though, as always, we do take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, we have a few sunny breaks through all the clouds out there. It's 52 degrees. It'll be generally cloudy this afternoon. The showers are about over with highs in the low to mid 50s. Chilly night coming up tonight, partly cloudy and down below freezing again. Sunshine returns tomorrow, but not the warmth. Tomorrow's highs only in the low 40s. Wednesday looks okay for holiday traveling. Sun and clouds, highs in the mid 40s. And the pick of the week actually is Thanksgiving Day. On Thursday should be beautiful. Lots of sunshine, milder temperatures with highs in the mid 50s. But again, uh, clouds right now 52 degrees here in Quincy. Checking news for you today, some of the federal pandemic relief funds approved for Massachusetts will be making their way to Quincy. State Representative Tacky Chan says money has been earmarked for some social service and some infrastructure improvements. You know, the delegation was able to get uh, $400,000 to put towards the ferry service uh, in uh, Square Point Park, uh, which, you know, John and uh, Bruce, you know, Rep. Senator Air, uh, Senator Keenan, and Rep. Ayers have been supporting it. I've you know, got a bit of money, 600 grand for dredging Quincy Bay, which the three of us have been also working on, and uh, some money for Q Quincy Community Action Programs uh, for improving their uh, food pantry, as you know, food security has been a challenge, and, you know, some money for Quincy Asian Resource for a mobile food pantry. Uh, mm-hmm. Not necessarily a new idea, but something we actually do not have on the South Shore. So, you know, we, we put some uh, startup or uh, one-time capital monies out there, and uh, during, you know, obviously the ferry and the beach dredging is a big capital project. So we're looking to kind of piecemeal that as we go along. And again, this becomes the federal funding thing, right? The, the Congress voted on a massive infrastructure package bill. The projections are that we're going to see somewhere maybe up to $12 billion coming to Massachusetts. Uh, we do have another $2 billion in cash infrastructure money sitting in the trust fund um, that we've not spent yet because we want to see how much infrastructure money we can get first from the federal government on the, on the bigger piece and uh, how much flexibility we have. So you know, we have a lot of flexibility in that $12 billion. You know, obviously we're going to be focusing on pending projects that need to be funded, but also our, lo- our local projects as well, which the administration may not prioritize, but obviously your delegation absolutely does prioritize because we live close to you all. And we use the same roads you do. So, yeah. uh, we, you know, we're going to try to see how much more money we can get back directly to the city to spend or direct uh, the state to spend money on, on a city and, co- you know, city state partnership projects. Mayor Thomas Koch says he may hire some full-time personnel just to oversee federal funds that may be coming into Quincy from the federal infrastructure bill that became law just last week. Mayor says the city may have to compete for grants for some of that funding. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says he does not believe that the recent issues of racist hate speech that prompted a student walkout at Quincy High School is the sole responsibility of the school system. I don't know that the schools have to be responsible for every action a kid takes uh, out on, I, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not saying we accept anything they do or say, but, you know, at some point, the family's got to expect some, expect some responsibility. I, I think the schools are being held to a, a, uh, a, a tough standard here where we can't control everything, particularly outside the classroom. Having said that, it's our responsibility to provide a very caring and loving environment that everybody gets treated with respect in school while they're on our watch. Parents entrust them to our care. And I think we need to continue to look at how we can improve um, that environment. But uh, it's, it's, it's difficult times right now all across the country, and, and uh, we're not an exception to that. Although I do think we're an exception in many, many ways as a community, but we're not uh, certainly not immune from some of these issues. Mayor also blamed the recent racial unrest on a breakdown of faith in any established religion. He said he believed the school administration responded appropriately to the issue, and school officials say they will continue to have discussions and provide counselors for students and parents to address racial issues within the school system. The schools are forming a new equity working group to focus on issues of systemic racism, discrimination, and climate and culture issues. House Speaker Ron Mariano of Quincy says he does intend to run for another term in the House next November, then another term as House Speaker in 2023. 
Mariano was first elected to the House in 1991 in a special election. He turned 75 years old this past year and had a pacemaker implanted back in June. After some heart issues, Mariano says he now feels great and looks forward to the challenge of allocating the billions of dollars in federal pandemic relief funds that are coming to Massachusetts. Mariano became House Speaker after Robert DeLeo resigned to take a position at Northeastern University. A homeless man from Boston is charged with pulling a knife on an employee of Supreme Liquors on Hancock Street in Wollaston last week. Police say 52-year-old James Miller pulled a knife and threatened to kill the male employee last Thursday evening. Miller reportedly became upset when he was told he couldn't see a female employee at the store. Miller eventually fled on foot but was quickly apprehended and charged with assault by means of a dangerous weapon and making threats to kill. Quincy Police K-9 Luna did recover a blue-handled folding knife nearby. Well, preparations are well underway for the 68th annual Quincy Christmas Festival Parade and other Christmas celebrations. After being canceled last year due to the pandemic, the parade is back this year and promises to be better than ever. This year's parade grand marshals are Manit Community Health Center and the Quincy Health Department. Mayor Thomas Koch said he wanted to honor both organizations for their response to the pandemic. The theme of this year's parade it's the most wonderful time of the year, as submitted by Quincy accountant Dolly DePisa, who has won the theme contest for the past three parades. Now the parade steps off next Sunday at noon, winds down Hancock Street to North Quincy High School. Of course, you can watch it live right here on QATV. Holiday lights will be turned on in Quincy Center Friday night. Santa will arrive by helicopter this year at Pageant Field Saturday at noon. That's a check of news coming up. We sit down with Quincy Chamber of Commerce President Tim Cahill next. Welcome back. The holiday season is upon us. Of course, here in the city of Quincy, that means lots of festivities in addition to the normal quote uh, unquote festivities of tree lightings and uh, Santa helicopter arrivals and a parade. We also have a holiday market at Kilroy Square in downtown Quincy. The Chamber of Commerce is once again organizing that event. The President, Tim Cahill, is here to tell us all about it. Happy holidays, Tim. Happy Thanksgiving to you, yes. Joe, and uh, looking forward to uh, the holidays that follow. Yes, definitely. So S we're excited, although we want to get our turkey in first. <laughs> we don't want to rush things, yeah, right? Yeah, we, we do. I, I've already seen Christmas lights up, and I think people are uh, anxious to uh, celebrate this year, which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. We're not going to fine anyone for putting their lights up early. <laughs> That's like some communities have been. <laughs> we'll talk we'll talk about that during another show. Yeah. yeah. It's Christ, Christmas Town USA here in Quincy, right? Oh, yeah. it's, it's it is. It is. It's, yeah. The city does a great job, and we're uh, really proud to be helping out this year and adding to the festivities. Yeah. We uh, tried to do it last year, but uh, came up short, unfortunately. Yep. Um, but we're coming back bigger and better than ever. I mean, Kilroy Square is officially opened. It opened on Thursday, and, um, and we've kind of unaffordable unofficially and informally kicked it off with our farmers market this past year sure. and our vendor market on Saturdays and the beer gardens. So it's becoming more known. The signs are now up yes. and lit up and, yes. uh, and we're adding to that lighting by uh, lighting up Kilroy Square and then adding, um, we have almost 75 vendors uh, coming in over the six days. So what, what we're doing is we're setting up a pop-up uh, Christmas market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we did that two years ago at the former Child World site, if you right. remember. Yes. Uh, that is now slated for development. And we've been looking at Kilroy Square ever since as a, as a great spot for it. So we have two tents uh, arriving tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we've been working on lighting up the, uh, the trees on Kilroy Square, uh, the gallery that connects Hancock Street to the square, the covered gallery um, is decorated, and we have a Christmas tree getting ready to be lit, so we're uh, competing with uh, the mayor's Christmas trees <laughs> now, both uh, at the Common yep. as well as at the uh, General's Park, which is our big one there this morning yes. uh, going up. So, And I guess that ceremony is going to take place a little bit later in the year, that tree lighting ceremony. But we're, we're, you know, we're basically working with the city. Our event starts on Friday, which is when the, the, the Christmas on the Common lights up. Right. Um, so we'll be open uh, at 4 o'clock on Friday, which is Black Friday, mm -hmm. the day after Thanksgiving. 
uh, open Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to 4 p.m. and then do one more weekend. So we have two weekends, six nights, six days and nights of uh, holiday shopping. Yeah. It'll be great. I mean, all local vendors uh, around either in Quincy or around from the South Shore here in Massachusetts, um, many of which that we have used before, we've okay. had before, but a lot of new ones too, because we've never done it on this scale before. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a big one for us, um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about the way Kilroy Square has worked really well. The parking garage is is great. I mean, the the access, whether it's the subway, whether it's parking on the street or parking in the garage, is is really good. And our goal is to attract people, you know, from the common, which has been sort of a spot to go mm -hmm. for the last couple of years since it opened, especially yep. during the holidays, and bring them down towards the square sure. for the businesses and for the local shops that are, um, you know, trying to do their best for the holidays, especially the restaurants. Yeah. How are you going to do that? How are you going to attract them? Are you going to actually physically go up and start, you know, handing out flyers? Or, or No, but we've been doing uh, a lot of posting. We'll be sent, we put up some, some signs on the, the businesses. We okay. have a couple of signs going up. Um, last Two years ago when we did it, um, we had our best night. So it's just sort of a natural uh, sort of draw from mm -hmm. the square after the, the trees are lit and people, the Santa Claus goes away, you know. Now uh, what do we do, uh, right? You know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And we, so we're promoting it with the city, but we're also promoting it on our own channels yeah. as well through the chamber. Are people finding out where Kilroy Square is and what it is now? Because that was a big hurdle, wasn't it? Was, yeah, I you think know, You say Kilroy Square and they're like, what? Yeah, I think the where is starting to, to register with people. The what is still a process. Okay, you know, unless you're like you and me have been around forever. You don't know what we're saying. We say yeah. Kilroy, right? But what's good about it now is that there are signs explaining what Kilroy, wh oh, where, the, okay. where Kilroy came from. Okay. Um, there are signage and explanations uh, at two different ends of the square. So it, it's kind of like Faneuil Hall in a sense. Once you're there, yeah. you figure it out yeah. and you, you dip, delve into the history. But without even knowing the history, it's just so beautiful there. Oh, it no question. It's so nice. Yeah. Uh, surrounded by, you know, uh, like I said, a parking garage, the Fours restaurant, which has done really well with yes. outdoor seating. They're going to keep their seating open really? during um, the winter market, okay. you know, weather permitting. Obviously, yeah. Uh, they have heaters out yes, there, and yeah. if the weather holds up, if we get some Thanksgiving weather, which we're scheduled to get, and it lasts a little bit, it should be, it will be perfect for that. Okay, all right. Um, we, we do have a tent for the vendors just in case, because we couldn't of risk course, yeah. having them outside if uh, the vendors weren't. And then we have, we're going to use the inside space, so we're decorating the gallery as well. Oh, so right. people, we have Coffee Break Cafe and a couple of bakeries coming in to set up sort of a little coffee a chocolate spot, gotcha. um, which will also serve people for the Christmas parade. Oh. It will be open on Sunday. Okay. Um, so if people want to warm up or after the parade mm -hmm. ends, they'll be able to come through. Um, so we've, we think we've covered it all. Um, we've got some great vendors. I mean, our, our goal is to help the business community. Obviously, right. But to yeah. work closely with the city and try to make things work together mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, in opposition. And yeah. I, you know, I enjoy very much working with the mayor. He's given us a lot to work with and has given us the authority to sort of oversee the square and activate it so that people really use it and discover its beauty because it's, it's, it's different than the common, it's different than General's Park, um, but they all kind of fit together and, and they make for a really nice walk and rest sort of triangle. Yeah, are the new residents that live there finding it, you know, uh, yes. are they the ones yeah. that are actually activating it? Yes, yeah. I mean, they are plus people who are parking in the garage, okay. which yeah. is a big draw, one dollar an hour still. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah. it's, a, it's a great draw, and you see people have been using it to sort of walk to the restaurants okay. and go to work every day. Mm. We, we see people in the morning, we see people, people at night. Sure. So when they're coming back from work, they'll see the square, when, you know, they'll see the, the market. When they're going to work, they'll see what what will be coming. because yeah, they live there now, right? There's they live there. There's, and there's Chestnut Place, there's the LVC development. And there's quite there's a few people working. Not everyone's okay. back to work, but I see a lot of people at South Shore Hospital, which has a space right across the street above oh, the right. Fat Cat. Sure, yeah. Milton Hospital, which is yes. right down the street. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's more people working in the square than I thought there were. Now, okay. not the big ones aren't back yet, Stop and Shop and some of the big ones, right. but there are quite a few people that are going into work, and I think this will be a great place for them to come after work, mm -hmm. before work, but also for the citizens of the city yep. on Saturdays and Sundays, because we're going to be open Friday night, mm -hmm. 4, to, 4 to 9 p.m., and then Saturday, 11 to 4, okay. both Saturdays. So it's for everybody. 
those people who visit Quincy, those people who work in Quincy, those people who live right around yes. the building, yes. but also people from Hausneck and Marymount and Germantown and you know um, West Quincy, all, all the Quincy Point, all the different neighborhoods. And you don't have to go into Boston. Like you used to feel like, I got to go into Boston to, to experience the holiday. You don't have to go anywhere. Well, I mean, even the Seaport District is trying something like this on a bigger scale, obviously. Correct. Um, but who would have ever thought the Seaport District would be a destination for holiday shopping, you know, 20 years ago? Nobody yeah. wanted to go and there. And the South End has been doing it for a long yeah. time. So we're not competing with them. We're just complimenting them. If you don't want to go into Boston, yeah. um, we have a, a city that is mask optional here in Quincy as opposed to, you know, Boston, masking only yep. uh, in Boston so it, it's it's a little bit more relaxed a little bit more spread out mm -hmm. you've got the three squares now that will be lit up mm -hmm. and our goal and we're working with the mayor on this is to get all of the business districts the whole downtown all of Wallace and Center all of North Quincy lit up like they used to be yeah back in when we were yeah. growing up in the days yeah. so um, we're working to get our uh, our building um, lit up a little bit. Oh, the Granite Trust festive, building. So oh, okay. the, the Granite Trust building. So that's a little side project I'm working on with Sean Keneally okay. um, and oh. the owners of the building. Okay. Um, but it would be it, it's nice to connect. I well, mean, speak. There used to be a huge Christmas tree right in front of yeah. that building. Well, that's for that's years. for that's a future use. Okay. But right now, the mayor's got his dibs on all the big <laughs> Christmas trees. It seems like we had to go out of state for ours. Okay. Um, but it's it's. You know, it's obviously it's a friendly competition. We complement sure, each other, yeah. and we're just giving people a reason to either come to Quincy or stay in Quincy, yeah. and and spend their dollars, shop locally. You don't have to buy everything on Amazon, especially with the, you know, the the um, what do you call it, the supply chain issues. Yes, you can buy something at Kilroy Square on a Friday and take it home with you. It's right there, and you yeah. get unique gifts too. Like I said, they're all small vendors, um, artisans, mm -hmm. crafters, jewelry makers. Um, candle makers. Yeah. I mean, it's really it's a it's a good mix. Well, it's speaking of online, they may not have an online. I mean, a, a physical presence other than like the holiday market here, right? Correct. Maybe they only Correct. have an online presence. Correct. Yeah, Correct. So you, so you could do both, right. and it's a great way to introduce people to those vendors. Yeah. They all do have their own websites. Mm -hmm. They have their own Instagram sure. page, yeah. and that helps us promote it as well. Right. They're promoting it. We're, they're promoting it for us, and vice versa. Yeah. I mean, the city has invested hundreds of millions of dollars in the downtown, both public and private mm -hmm. money. And there needs to be more than just people going to work or even just people living there. We got to get them out and about to experience what we have in Quincy and also to attract new vendors, yes. you know, new store owners. We've got one of our vendors, um, it's called Mien Mien. It's a, it's a French pastry mm -hmm. chef and store that was with us two years ago and she has now opened up um, a storefront okay. in Quincy Center. Okay down by the Starbucks on the newer Monroe building yep. across from President's Place. And that's our goal. Ultimately is to get some of these vendors, these pop-up vendors to invest in Quincy sure. and put up a storefront or a brick and mortar yeah. store. And we've got we've got a new gift shop, William James Gifts, which is at the Cliveden Street project. Okay. Another bakery opening up there and a new bakery opening up at Peter O'Connell's new building mm. coming. So it's starting to happen. And a lot of people say, where's the retail? We've got all these apartment buildings yes. and we've got all these condos with these storefronts where's the retail well it's coming okay it is come some of it's come and some of it's coming well target is open up in north target quincy opened now. up in north so, quincy yeah. so i mean it's it is happening and and we're really excited about the future and these things will only add to the quality of life because yeah. again it's not just about the buildings the buildings bring people and people spend money and people also want a place to go and you don't have to go into boston anymore to do that or if you're from the south shore you don't have to drive by Quincy to get into Boston. Mm -hmm. You can just come to Quincy. Plenty of ways to get here, plenty of places to park, and just a really good, safe, you know, holiday atmosphere. Yeah. I've heard a lot, of course, about the worker shortage um, right now. Are, are Quincy biz businesses seeing that as well? I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I hear about it mostly in the service industry, sure. the, biz the restaurants. Yeah. A lot of people have just retired or they've, again, some have been pushed out because of vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm at their business mm -hmm. level, some in the government, the government push. We're not seeing that as much in Quincy, but it's still hard to get people to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, until the customers come back, it's hard to get the, the, the it, workers it's to cyclical, come back. Right? It's cyclical, you know? right? Yeah, but I was at McKay's, McKay's really. restaurant with my wife and grandchildren on Saturday, uh -huh. and it was, it was, it was moving, <laughs> it was busy, and there was a bunch of you know, uh, waitresses and waiters all, all right. over the place. So I would have thought that, you know, Dick, 
you know, would be struggling to get help. Looks like he's got a lot of it. Okay. I'm sure they're working harder than they have before right. yeah. uh, to service everyone, but the business was really good. And I know that McKay's took a real hurt, a real hit during the pandemic. They lost a lot of people. The churches, when churches closed down, that was a big part of their business. That seems to have picked up. I know the, the restaurant scene in Quincy Center is very, very, very vibrant. Okay. Um, they're doing now the takeout plus the eat in and yes. so I, I honestly believe that this holiday we're back almost to normal. Really? And okay. at least with the the attitude that people have. They mm -hmm. don't feel afraid. They're if they're healthy, they're coming out. If they've been vaccinated they're coming out or if they've had COVID, um, and they feel strong enough to come out yep. and not worry, they they're doing it. Okay. And and they don't have to, but it really feels like feels like a holiday that we used to celebrate pre-COVID, yeah. uh, which seems so long ago, but it was about two years ago that we had our last normal holiday season. It does seem like a lifetime ago, you're right. You yeah. know, and Thanksgiving feels good too. I mean, we're having the whole family over this year and n without worry or fear. And I think it's time to go back to living and, and normal living as best as we can, mm -hmm. especially for those people who are healthy enough to do it. But we can't worry about every, you know, every health issue. I mean, we've, we're surrounded by them. Um, and if we lived our lives just worrying about if we were going to get sick, we would never do anything. So, Is this a good opportunity for folks who are looking to change jobs, do you think, or, or find uh, a, a, their first job to, oh, to get into the market? Oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I remember for, you know, when I was in business years and years ago, I mean, this was, it was, it, it's always been a struggle. You know, when times are busy, it's harder to get people. You have to pay more for right. them. They have the, you know, they're more in charge than the employers. Mm -hmm. Right now, the employees are in charge. But if you treat people right, and they can make money, um, and and they feel like the the institution or the place they're working at is good, a good place, they'll they'll, they'll stay. Yeah. I mean, people need to work, and I think people want to work. Most people, I think the government has to stop giving people money. Okay. Because <laughs> if you give people money, then maybe they will feel less inclined to work. Mm -hmm. And I and I hope that will slow down so we can get back to. Uh, what, what we're known for here in this country, and certainly in this region, is that people want to work and better themselves and move up the ladder. Okay. Do you think outdoor dining will increase in the years to come, Tim? After yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's a permanent part of, okay. our, of our city. Once we get a little bit more mass, mm -hmm. meaning more restaurants on Hancock Street mm -hmm. and maybe in some of the other business districts, we can close down maybe a lane or a portion and run it the way they do up in the North End, which right. has been very, I know very that was successful. the thought with the super wide sidewalks, right? Is to yes, activate yeah. Those, yeah. And, and it's just a question of you, you can't open one and you need, you need a little bit of a mass. You need okay. multiple restaurants. I mean, that's the way it's working in downtown. Downtown Quincy has become, and Wollaston in North Quincy, become sort of destination for restaurants and eating, ethnic eating, mm -hmm. and all different kinds of eating. And uh, once you set that up, then people just come and they say, you know, tonight I'll go to Alba's, tomorrow I'll go to Fuji's, yeah. you know, next week I'll go up to North Quincy and eat Vietnamese, or, you know, have, um, you know, have a steak somewhere, or, so it, it's becoming that. It's definitely becoming that. Okay. And it helps having all of these people living downtown. Sure. It really does. And yeah. there's a lot more coming, which I think is great for the business community because it creates more opportunity. We're looking to get a commercial building now in at um, the, the, old, old Ross the old Ross Way right. as opposed to a commercial slash residential building. And yes. I think that's a good thing. You do? Okay. I absolutely the do. The mayor I think, thought it was a good thing. I believe, I, I mean, I'm thrilled with it because okay. we've got still got a lot of apartment buildings and condos being built all over the city and in the downtown. Mm -hmm. But what we need now is a mix, a mix of commercial, residential. Commercial pays more in taxes right. too, and from what I understand, it looks like it may be a life science or a biotech That's building. That's the word right now, yeah. And I think that'll be great. Okay. I think Quincy has that opportunity to pick up some of those biotech companies that have been basically locked down into uh, Cambridge mm -hmm. and South Boston, and now come south because we've got both a pro-business city hall, the mayor's office, uh, you know, active, and they've created the infrastructure. The infrastructure is in place. I mean, you've got. Um, McConville Way, Dunford Drive. I mean, it's all set. Everything but the bridge hasn't opened yet, but I think that's imminent. It looks like it's ready, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think the road is ready. Okay. Now, the bridge has been ready for a while, but the road, yes. um, Bergen Parkway, is now seems to be finished. Yes. I don't see the backup there that I've been seeing exactly, for a while. Exactly, yeah. So a lot going on, but I think most of it's good, and most of it, as long as it stays in the business districts along the T, Quincy Adams, Quincy Center, Wollaston, and North Quincy, I think that'll be a good thing for folks who live in the neighborhoods, want to get a taste of what being in a city's like, mm -hmm. but don't want the big city and don't want all the problems that a big city has or the congestion. Sure. 
But in the short term, it is the uh, holiday market at Kilroy Square. Yeah, yeah. We, we, it's the first time ever, the Kilroy Square holiday market. Um, it has grown, and it is bigger and better than ever. And we're excited to be in business this year and, and just to be out there. It's an outdoor event mm -hmm. for the most part, although you, there will be an indoor setup at the gallery, which is the public space that runs between the LBC building and Kilroy Square. Right. So you can get from Hancock Street to Kilroy which Square. Which is key too, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it's, it's a nice, again, this was a public private partnership. Yes. Uh, LBC built it, the city owns it, the city manages, and we've been allowed to, to do some work. We've got some window painting going on in there. Okay. We've got some art installations going on, some digital arts installations. Oh. I believe on the second weekend, we haven't confirmed yet, we'll do some family events, like some face painting, and maybe get Santa Claus to come, okay. if possible, if we can find a Santa Claus, <laughs> if you know of any, from the, nor if from the North Pole, and uh, tell them we, we could use one here in Quincy. Okay. Um, it's going to be, a, it's a really good family event, it's a really good place to shop. Um, it's like Derby Street, only a little bit more natural, mm -hmm. and the parking is around the end, and all the activities in the middle, as opposed to the other way around. Yes. And it's the way I somewhat would like to think it's the way that Quincy Square used to be. We have all these small mom and pop shops, right. which is what the market is. Yes. There's no chains in there. They're all individual markets. They're small entrepreneurs with either a, you know, an idea to grow something or maybe a hobby that they're really good yeah. at, carving or, like I said, designing jewelry and stuff. Get it's inspired. It. And yeah. it's different. It's not cookie cutter. Right. If you're looking for something different for Aunt Mary or <laughs> Uncle Joe or you, your nieces <laughs> yes. and nephew, you know, things that you, that you don't think they'll yeah. already have that, that everyone else can get on Amazon. I want to wish you and everybody at the Chamber and your family a very happy holiday season, too. You too, Joe. Thank and we so look much. forward to having people come down again Friday, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll be at Kilroy Square. Okay. But the square will be lit up throughout the whole holiday season. And Excellent. we'll have our very own Christmas tree there as well. And the weather looks okay, actually. Uh, take a look at the rest of the forecast for today. It's probably the wettest day of the week with highs in the uh, low 50s. Tomorrow, the sunshine returns. A little chilly, but look at Thanksgiving Day. It's going to be gorgeous, and uh, next weekend looks uh, dry but cool. Thanks again to Tim Cahill for stopping by. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We're off on Friday, by the way, for Thanksgiving. Join us next Monday. The Quincy Symphony Orchestra will be here to talk about their holiday plans. Until then, happy Thanksgiving.